beautiful friends and welcome to your video on the new moon happening at four degrees of Pisces coming up February 23rd. What an interesting moon I think that this is and the whole theme of February. If you haven't watched your February um, horoscope video, make sure you check it out so you can have a little sense of the background and the backdrop that this is sitting against as we're discussing it. But all of February seems to be this place where we are gathering information or we're going back over information and it's not quite time to take a leap with it yet, but instead we're getting it all together so that as we get to March, we kind of get to have this expansion and this explosion of information and we can move some things forward. So this moon, even though it is um, a new moon, right? It's the chance and the opportunity this time, I think, to gather the information we need with the intention of giving something a fresh start or giving something a new beginning going forward, right? Almost here at this particular moon, I feel like we are requesting to be shown, right? Show me, let me hear my intuition, let spirit guide me, let me be clear on my ideals of what I want and what I need moving forward. Because if I can get that clarity or if I'll allow myself to be shown or I'll gather the information, when I jump forward, I have everything I need to get this ball rolling and to continue it in motion. So. So let's talk about this. This is exciting. You can see I put all of the aspects up already so that we can talk about the actual astrology because remember astrology is not just our intuition. That's an intuitive reading. But astrology is technical as well so you want to make sure you're getting the technicalities when you're watching your astrology, okay? So first and foremost, this is a new moon. So a new moon says we're going to plant some seeds, right? We're going to plant these seeds of intention. What do I want here? I'm trying to begin something fresh. Not necessarily that I'm starting something fresh over and brand new, but I'm just trying to give this fresh eyes, fresh energy to the table, right? This is the darkest phase of the moon. So we literally are out there planting these seeds of intention in the dark, right? We're just un <laughs> out there. We are hoping to God we are going to plant uh, green beans and we're hoping we're going to get green beans. You know what I mean? But you plant this thing in the dark and then you're going to allow the rest of the moon phases for this thing to develop. Now this particular new moon is actually in the energy of Pisces, which Pisces Pisces is both, right? Signs are neutral, really, right? There's there's what we call the light side and the dark side, but it's very neutral because sometimes a dark quality can help you get something done. But in the Piscean energy, we typically know this to be creative, an energy that walks and moves in between the worlds, right? The place of things that are intangible and we can kind of dissolve that and the things that are tangible and, and we bring them from that place into a place that's material and has a little bit of structure to really make them useful. In Pisces energy though, we also have delusion and escapism, right? The things that we're doing to avoid being in our reality because maybe a non-reality place feels a little bit better or maybe it doesn't even feel better, but it just feels like the truth. So at this new moon, where the sun and the moon, the actual aspect is that they are in conjunction, the sun and the moon are in conjunction. So when that happens, we have our two luminaries that are they're holding on to each other, which means Anything is possible. My insides and my outsides, my structures and my imagination, they all get to come together here in a tight little box of possibilities, right? So in, in Piscean energy, we're saying there is a possibility for ideals, for creativity, for healing, for transformation, um, for work on bringing, getting clear on anything that may be in your delusion or your escape zone. Anything like that becomes really abundant here. Now, at this particular moon as well, the next aspect we have is that we've got this new moon in conjunction here in the red circle with Mercury. And Mercury is our planet of communication, decision-making, 
thinking, um, siblings, neighbors, any of those kinds of things will wrap up in Mercury energy because we want to connect and we want to network with our Mercury energy, right? But Mercury this time is in retrograde. Okay, that is important at this particular moon to consider that in this aspect because throwing that moon and Mercury together means we're going to communicate something, right? We're going to communicate about something. If you do ritual like I and many people do, maybe you're writing something down at this new moon. Maybe you're writing down what you'd like to manifest. But because Mercury is retrograde here, you may be in this space where you're having to go back to the past to pull forward an ideal. You're having to go back to something in the past and look at where do I need to create transformation around that? Where do I need to ask for help and clarity around that? Is it a creative thing that's coming from your past that you're pulling forward and you're maybe talking about or you're writing about? Another thing I really do think of is I think of the word atonement or amends right? Is there something coming out of your past that you need to clean up and you need to set to peace? Do you need to admit you were wrong? Have you been in a space where you haven't wanted to see that you were wrong or you were off base in some way, shape, or form? This mercury energy, our thought process is not logical. It's intuitive. Go back into your feelings. Go back into your emotional body, your spiritual body, and see where you can investigate what needs to come out of there and be spoken um, into your new moon manifestation. This is literally a helper for you to be doing that. And something for somebody, I'm not sure exactly who this is for, but you taught something before or you wanted to teach before, and at this new moon, plant your seeds of intention, and by the time we're in March, you should see some opportunities to be able to teach. So if that's you, please leave it in the comment section down below. Okay, we've got more aspects surrounding this beautiful moon as well. Now from actual, from connections that are actually made from the moon, let's look at those first, right? So we've got this sextile from the suit, from the, from the soon. We've got this sextile going from the moon all the way to Mars, who's over in Capricorn. Okay, now a sextile is wonderful when the planets have sex. That's good for us. It means not only is it a pocket of opportunity, but we're going to take action on that opportunity, right? We're going to intelligently take action. Now, this is an interesting connection. First of all, Mars up here in and of his own right, he's traveling in conjunction at this particular time with the south node, okay? Now, Mars is in Capricorn and he is exalted here. He is happy, he is doing good work, he's got structure to all of his energy, so he's resourceful, he's practical, he's ready to do things in a very grounded, make sense kind of way. That south node being up there though, this is where we're used to doing things a certain way, right? I'm comfortable in this energy. I, I'm in the tradition, right? And while Mars is up there, you may be doing and taking some of the same actions. You may have some of the same structures or the same grounding Earth energies in your, in your pocket, but they might not be the exact best fit, right? You may be needing to relook over those particular actions. Now, on the other hand, Mars traveling with that south node, there could be something that is structural or that is traditional in your life that's very good. And it's like, keep this going. This is actually working for you while it's also asking you to detach from some things that are not. Now, in this sextile with the moon, here you're trying to make a start and a new beginning and plant some seeds of intention for your own healing, for your own creativity, for your own expression, for your own place where you live in between the worlds. And as it connects here with this Mars, you're able to bring that into a material plane. So one of the things that I think of here is, you know, let's say you've had, um, you know, music or art that you've wanted to put out there in some way, shape, or form. This will help you to be able to do that, to bring it to a very grounded material place. Now, the other thing that I think of in this particular energy, right, is Pisces can go in between the worlds, so it can be a little bit deceptive. Mars is not deceived up here, right? He's like, nope, these are authoritarian energies, 
right? Saturn is you're an expert. There's some kind of expertise handing out here. So something that you may do and you maybe have to be mindful of is looking at staying in your lane, right? Where are you outside of your boundaries? Where are you outside of what you actually know how to do or to put out there? It is okay to be exactly right where you are, but you may have to use the sextile to make sure that if you're not the expert on something, that you stay in your own lane and give what you have to give. Because when you give what you honestly, truly, creatively have to give, everybody else will benefit. If not, what it can actually do is is, is bunk you against maybe an authority who knows a little bit more than you do. So practice staying in your lane too. Don't let yourself dissolve here in this Piscean energy, especially as you're taking on a very useful and grounded um, earth energy up there. Now, this moon is also in a sextile to Uranus, who's in Taurus. So also in another very grounded Earth energy, even though Taurus is not necessarily enjoying being jostled over there by that Uranian energy. Uranus is about bringing change. He brings shift. He says, we got to get out of this rut. We've been doing this the same way. This isn't working. And he doesn't just come around and shake you up for no reason. He's intuitive right? This is innovative. This is genius energy that takes the rut away and allows something new and better fitting to come in here. But it usually comes with a fair amount of surprise. So don't be surprised about that at all. Now, in connection with this particular um, moon here, again, something you've been doing does have value in the material world or something that you can be doing or maybe something you've seen from the past that you're going to clean up and enact into your world. It has value here, but you've not seen how to do it differently quite yet. And so this energy is coming in here showing you how to do some things a little bit different. And it's also showing you because this is Pisces energy that has so much to do with your ideals, right? Like what is ideal for you? Then maybe your ideals need to be shaken up. What is right for your life? You have to look at these ideals because if you don't set your ideals, how will you know that you're growing towards them? If you don't set your ideals, how will you know that you're successful or not being successful, right? So what are your ideals? And we are aging, my friends, all of us, right? We're aging, we're getting older. Our our spirits are becoming um, a little bit more um, vocal about things in this season. So it may just be an indicator to help you see here as well that, oh yeah, I'm not really interested in this relationship anymore. I'm not interested in this dynamic anymore. So that helps you reset your ideals as well. And you're going to take action to do them and they will be spirit led. You will maybe write about them, speak about them, whatever it is. Okay, now Uranus, who's down here in Taurus, is also in a trine with Mars, who's up there in Capricorn. Now, this, again, this is action meets do it different. And this is our actual action energy of Mars taking on Uranus. Now, Uranus is electric, right? He is electric, he is booming, and he is down to move. And Mars is exalted, so he's in a good place. And he's always down to make some movements and take some on the ground, boots to the ground level action. So here, you're ready to do things differently, literally do things differently. But it's nice because they're both in earth energies. So whatever new actions, new revelations you're having, new structures you want to put in place, you are able to very maturely and groundedly bring these to reality. And think about how gorgeous that is, you guys. You're being led and guided by spirit. You're being led and guided by a soul energy that's saying, we need to clean this up. We need to change this. We need to stop running from this. We need to say, I'm good at this. We need to go see that family member who has got mental challenges or whatever that may be. We need to take care of our own mental stuff that's going on and then this energy gives you the opportunity to take different action. You move out of the space and it's very material. Spirit-led movement in a material plane. It's absolutely beautiful. Not to mention, as we look at this combination of energy, it's very earth and water heavy over here. And earth and water elementally are a wonderful combination. Of course, we have to be mindful of the shadows of those, 
right? If there is too much water, we're going to create mud. And if there's too much earth, we're going to create absolutely nothing because it's going to absorb all of that water. So you want to make sure that you're staying in your lane. You're trying to deal with whatever delusions or maybe in between the world things are over here, but you've got supported action to be able to do that. Now, we have also got Venus, who's down here in Aries, squaring Jupiter, who's up here in Capricorn. Now, neither of these planets are necessar necessarily comfortable where they are in these two particular signs. However, they are both benefic energies. Venus is our smallest benefic planet, right? And she's about relationships and money and harmony and sensuality and all of these good things. Our values lie in there as well. And then Jupiter is our big benefic energy. And with his one eye, he's the guru, all seeing, all wisdom over all of us, giving us a much more universal value, a much more universal ideal. So as these two are squaring each other, Venus in Aries is impulsive, you guys. It knows what it wants and it's going to move to try and go get it. But if you can see this square is kind of locked in between all of this other good stuff that's like, no, go towards the spirit, go towards the spirit. And Venus is like, no, I want to do it. I want to move. I want to put my body in motion and do stuff right now. And Jupiter is up here in Capricorn and he's saying, Venus, hold on, hold on. It's not time. It is February, Venus. Relax, right? Like it's not time for us to shoot everything forward. Instead, we're gathering. We're gathering information. We're re-looking at ideals. And instead, he says, Venus, instead of trying to run out there and make everything happen right now, what do you want? Why don't you tell me what you want? Venus and Aries, tell me what your body needs. Tell me, tell me who you are. What are your ideals about your identity right now? What are your values around that, right? And then Jupiter is up here with the eye in the sky and he's like, we've got to have solid structures. We've got to have solid structures and right now I don't have a structure to give you. So in this square, you're stimulated into action. You're stimulated to want to move some things forward, but it's not quite time yet. So spend your moon manifesting your information, your evidence, looking over your ideals, looking back. And as we move into March and we get ready for that Virgo full moon and then we get ready for Saturn to move into Aquarius, you have this opportunity to take these things forward. Now I do think at some level too, if at this moon you feel like you're not 100% clear on what your ideals are, on what you want, on the timing, on any of those things. Just gather the best information you can at this particular moon because right now you're creating the dream. As we move forward, you'll have plenty of opportunities to put the dream into tangible action, okay? So I feel like this is going to be a really... Um, interesting moon because so much of it is walking between the worlds. It's this place where, you know, all this Capricorn energy has boundaries and structures and then um, Piscean energy likes to dissolve those boundaries. So we're kind of moving in and out. And I don't know about you guys, but a lot of the feeling I've been having, especially since Mercury moved into the energy of Pisces, is I am very well aware of the spirit realm, but I'm not as completely aware of where that is going moving forward. I just know my job is to be here, do what is in front of me, keep my head where my hands are at, and to create and say, okay, are there things I need to clean up in my spiritual realm? Have I harmed anybody? Do I have debt? Am I trying to escape in some way, shape, or form? Where do I have creative things to say? And I'm not necessarily putting those out there. And if I stay in that kind of realm, it's helping me own that Leo moon energy as well, where I'm just doing me and that's totally okay. So I don't know what, what your experiences are. I'm curious to hear about how your Leo moon and this one will manifest for you. Please leave me in the comment sections down below how this is going to present to you, okay? Now, if you do have a birthday that's happening around the 23rd or the 24th, a new moon um, at your birthday, especially depending on your chart, if it is in connection with any personal planets, tells us that this is a significant time of new beginnings for you. A new path or a new course is going to present itself and it may be quite different than what you were looking at before, but intuitively I think you'll know this is the direction that I need to go. And I think about the person who's out there getting sober 
right? This may be a path where it's like, oh, I've got to go down a completely different path. And maybe that's a spiritual path to get help. Maybe it's a path that leads me this way. Whatever it is, right, there's some place in there where the behavior and the path of the behavior will change. And it's leading to a whole new life, right? So really an interesting time. Enjoy your moon. I look forward to putting up pictures. If you follow me on Instagram or on Facebook, I shared my um my full moon ritual and I'm going to share my new moon ritual for the rest of the year as well so we can see how these are all playing out together okay all right you guys I love you so much I can't wait to see you in the next video so like this video comment share subscribe and I will see you next time bye everyone